Now, this is Lieutenant Evans of the Homicide Division. I am. Let me show you something interesting. This uh, strange-looking contraption is a type of drawing board used in making animated cartoons. It's also an important exhibit in the death of Stu Farrell, the famous cartoonist. You've probably followed Farrell's comic strip, Speed Kenyon. Several million readers do. Can you imagine a guy like that making a quarter of a million bucks a year committing suicide? Perhaps he didn't. Well, the medical examiner found strychnine in his pills. There's that suicide note. You can't laugh those things off. Oh, yes, the suicide note. This might be interesting to you. No more laughs here. Must be more out of this world. Don't feel too bad. Remember, this is killing me. Stu Farrell. This note was found on Farrell's desk by his estranged wife, Corinne Farrell, who also discovered the body. So we went to see her first. You say this was Mr. Farrell's apartment, hmm? Yes. Why? You and your husband were living apart. How did you happen to come here? Well, I... I came on a purely private matter. It had nothing to do with his death. You said Mr. Farrell was dead when you arrived. Who let you in? I have my own key. Mrs. Farrell, uh, when did you separate from your husband? Oh, it was about a year ago, I guess. Right after that shooting incident. That's right. I read about that in the papers. I don't seem to recall It any... was nothing. I, I just did it to frighten Stuart. And I won't be annoyed with any more questions. Well, you're going to have to answer questions sooner or later, Mrs. Farrell. Remember, your husband was murdered. All right. So the so-called shooting took place at Great Neck, Long Island, at a lawn party given for my husband by the Crown Feature Syndicate. My brother, Reese Hawley, was there. And Stu created a terrible scene in front of all the guests. The things he accused poor Reese of doing. According to the newspapers, Brother Reese has a hobby of signing other people's names to bank checks. Only my husband's. And why not? Reese had done plenty for him. Like what, Mrs. Farrell? He got him big royalties for books, radio, and movies. And for that, my husband paid him $50 a week. A measly $50 a week for bringing my husband an additional 100000 a year. Whoever put that strychnine in your husband's sleeping tablets was right on target, Mrs. Farrell. And when we find out who that was... It won't be Reese, I promise you that. Could be you, Mrs. Farrell. Me? Well, you had access to this apartment. I'd still have to have the strychnine. Oh, Chief. I found it. Strychnine. Found it in Farrell's dresser. Hmm. Almost empty. There's still enough in there to kill an elephant. It looks like Farrell did bump himself off. See the name on it? Yeah. Mrs. Farrell, one thing's been bothering me. Your husband was quite a man about town. How did he manage to keep up with his newspaper schedule? Well, about three years ago, when the syndicate began to squawk about his always being behind schedule, my husband hired Dan Thursby to help him. For the last six months or so, Thursby practically drew the strip himself. Gave Stu more time to play around with people like Inez Alvarez, that phony Brazilian dancer. She's engaged to my brother, but Stu often used her as a model. A fine excuse. Lieutenant Evans found this bottle of strychnine in your husband's dresser. Yes, I remember when his doctor first prescribed it. His doctor prescribed it. Well, there's nothing wrong in that, Lieutenant. One thirtieth of a grain can act as a tonic. A tonic? Mm -hmm. A third of a grain will kill a man. My husband must have known that, Mr. Allen. That's why he took it. First going to the trouble of putting it in his sleeping tablets? No, Mrs. Farrell. Perhaps he wanted someone to take the blame for murder. Someone he hated. Now, that's a good idea, Mrs. Farrell. I think I'll have a talk with your brother. I'm not going to let you persecute that poor boy. Mr. Hawley, when did you last see your brother-in-law? He broke up a mood. Now I'll never be able to finish. Never mind about that. When did you last see Stu Farrell? Stu Farrell? Last night. Why? Did he threaten to send you to jail? He always threatens, but nothing ever comes of it. Before I left, old Stu was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Oh? Why? What were you talking about? Inez Alvarez, among other things. I told Stu he could marry her after my sister divorced him. Big of me, wasn't it? Inez and I are engaged. What was his reaction to that? He said he would never divorce my sister, that I could keep Inez for myself. And I said, why don't you tell that to Inez? That's when he blew his bonnet. Really raved. Did you by any chance uh, suggest sleeping pills to quiet him down? Why, yes, I did. There are times I can be very considerate. I told him to swallow the whole bottle. 
Then maybe I don't have to tell you that Stu Farrell is dead. Somebody shoot him? No. He died from an overdose of strychnine. You don't seem particularly upset about your brother-in-law's death. I'm no hypocrite, Mr. Allen. Stu would have gotten it sooner or later. Are you speaking for yourself? Lots of people. I'll get it. Hello. Who? Yes, he's here. Yes, yeah, send her right up. Who was it? Inez Alvarez. I don't want to see her. Well, she's on her way up here. Miss Kelly and I will wait in there. Now remember, not even a hint that we're here. Answer the door. Remember what I told you. To Reese, from one great guy to another, Stu Farrell. They were actually fond of each other at one time. Are you alone? I'm always alone. Even when I'm with you, dear. What's on your mind? I'm leaving town tomorrow. Well, goodbye. And good luck. Is that all you've got to say? What's gotten into you? Nothing, darling. Am I not my usual sweet self? I don't get it. There's nothing to get. Understand, darling? No, I don't. You said I could have some more money Your if I... The doctor warned you not to get excited, my I sweet. hate to break this up. Well, who are you? Say, what is this? A frame-up? I had nothing to do with it, darling. What kind of money do you want from Holly? The money that's mine. The money he borrowed from me. When did he say he'd pay you? When Stu Farrell dies? Oh, don't make me laugh. Stu Farrell didn't leave him the right time. Well, don't you believe Holly will get a large sum of money from his sister in the event she inherits Farrell's estate? You mean if she inherits the estate? I happen to know there was some changes going to be made. What is this? A cross-examination? What kind of changes, Miss Alvarez? I don't know. Just talk. A moment ago, you spoke of Stu Farrell in the past tense. <laughs> so I don't talk so good. Remember me? I'm from Brazil. You know the place, Mr. Allen. It's near Ebbets Field. Why are you asking me all these questions? A couple of hours ago, Stu Farrell was found dead. Stu Farrell? Yes. He died of strychnine poisoning. Strychnine? Yes, darling, strychnine. You seem startled by the word. Inez is in a very strenuous profession. Her doctor prescribes strychnine to tone up her system. Oh, you hell. All right, all right. I think you better leave now, Miss Alvarez, but don't go too far. I may want to talk to you later. How well do you know Glenn Thursby? Very well. Before he became Stu Farrell's ghost artist, we started out in animated cartoons together. I did backgrounds, and Glenn started out as a tracer. Hey, this is a terrific break for Thursby. In what way? The syndicate will want Thursby to continue the Speed Kenyon strip. You know, you've given Thursby a pretty good motive for wanting Farrell out of the way. Oh, I'm sorry. I hadn't thought of that. Thursby's not a bad guy, really. Thanks very much, Holly. You've been a big help. Oh, you let me know if you get the sudden urge to travel. Uh-uh. I like it here. Later that afternoon, the handwriting experts came up with the startling information that the suicide note was written by Stu Farrell. Which left us right back where we started from. We had a body, four perfect suspects, but no murder. And then, just as things began to look darkest, came the break we'd been looking for. Hi, Chief. Oh, you caught me. Well, some of our greatest minds read the comics. Oh, I don't know. I never read them. Nice. <laughs> Pat, I want you to do a little research at the local newspaper morgue. When my secretary got back from the newspaper office, I felt we had the key to the solution. You yourself may have noticed it earlier in our little talk. Lieutenant Evans then tried to contact Glenn Thursby. Yeah, and I couldn't find him in, either at his home or in his office. Then I figured that if we were to find what we were hoping for, we'd have to crash Thursby's office. Hey, this bears out what Reese Hawley told us about Thursby. It sure does. He was really giving Farrell a kiss of death. Did you find anything in those old drawings dated June 13th? Well, you had it pegged, all right. June the 13th was the only one that was missing. Look out! 
Glenn Thursby? What about it? What about it? What about hitting me over the skull? Me, a lieutenant of homicide. A lieutenant of... Ho You're cops. Why didn't you say something about it? You didn't give us a chance. You're a little too impetuous. Where are you going with a traveling bag? Las Vegas. Why? Las Vegas? All by yourself? Yeah, all by myself. What's the idea? Look, if you're going to Las Vegas all by yourself, what do you need two tickets for? To New York City. You by any chance going to see Crown Feature Syndicate? With Inez Alvarez? All right, take him in, Lieutenant. All right. Well, look, I can explain everything. You'll get a chance to explain tomorrow morning. Well, that brings us up to the present. In a moment, you'll come face to face with the suspects. Uh, Miss Kelly, have the people arrived? Yes, they're here. All right, bring them in, please. Oh, Lieutenant, will you bring Thursby here? All right. Excuse me. Stephen Allen speaking. Yes. Oh, is that so? All right, let me know the minute she can talk. Thank you very much. That was the emergency hospital. Inez Alvarez had just been brought in unconscious after an automobile crash. So that eliminates her for the moment. However, we'll go on with our other suspects shortly. Now that you're all here, I intend to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Stu Farrell was poisoned by one of you. Mrs. Farrell, your late husband's attorneys informed me that Mr. Farrell is preparing to change his will, leaving you almost penniless. As it stands now, you don't have to worry the rest of your life. That is, provided you had nothing to do with his death. Isn't that a bit ridiculous? You know, it was I who called the police. The switchboard operator saw you come into the building. How would it have looked if you hadn't called the police? Thursby, inheriting the Speed Kenyon cartoon puts you into the big money, doesn't it? Makes you quite a celebrity. Oh, yeah. It's too bad the Crown Syndicate's keeping him a secret. Maybe you don't read your mail. We found this letter open in your studio. It's from Crown Features Syndicate in answer to a letter you wrote them a couple of weeks ago. I'll refresh your memory. So keep up the good work, Thursby. And if by any chance Farrell is unable to continue with Speed Kenyon, you will take over under your own byline. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that the alleged suicide note is actually a forgery. Yet the job was so ingeniously done that even an expert would hesitate before sending a person to the chair on that evidence alone. Now, there's a brilliant speech. How do you intend to do it? You've got quite a treat coming to you, Thursby. You see, uh, Farrell did write the suicide note. Now, Barthe. Mr. Hawley, I wonder if you'd write a short sentence and sign your name for me, please. Certainly. This is the silliest note I've ever written. Reese Hawley. Oh, Lieutenant. Will you step behind the screen and see if you can make a copy of Mr. Hawley's handwriting and signature? Thursby, when did you start working for Stu Farrell? Mm, about the middle of January. That studio you occupy, is it yours or did it belong to Mr. Farrell? Farrell was paying for it. I see. That's because he also used it as sort of a storeroom, huh? Oh, thanks, Lieutenant. Hmm. Yes, they look almost identical to me. I doubt whether anyone in this room, with the exception of Lieutenant Evans and Mr. Hawley, could tell the difference between them. You're probably wondering what we have hidden behind that screen. I won't keep you in doubt any longer. Where do you want this, Chief? Let's put it down. All right. Hawley, have you ever seen this type of drawing board before? Why, yes. They used them at animated cartoon studio. Whoever wrote the alleged suicide note used this method to trace it. As you can see, the light under the glass panel makes Mr. Hawley's note transparent and very easy to read. Thursby, how large do you draw your cartoons for newspaper reproduction? Twice the printed size? Why? Because Stu Furrow's so-called suicide note was twice the size of his normal handwriting. A few moments ago, you probably thought I was insane when I said that Farrell did write that note. Miss Kelly, will you tell us what you found in the back newspaper files? 
Stu Farrell wrote the suicide note as part of the continuity for the Speed Kenyon cartoon. You remember that continuity, Thursby? How could he? It was conveniently missing from his files. Perhaps Thursby doesn't remember the strip's continuity at that time. It was drawn before he became Stu Farrell's assistant. But you remember that panel, Hawley. Panel? What panel? The last panel missing from the autographed Speed Kenyon cartoon hanging on the wall of your studio. Well, there's no panel missing. No. Well, this is a photostatic copy of the newspaper reproduction of the original strip. It includes the last panel with the suicide note. You cut that last panel from the original drawing and traced it. Oh! Let me have that. You're wrong. It was I who left the suicide note. Oh, I believe you, Mrs. Farrell. But it was Holly who wrote it and gave it to you to use at the proper time. You see, your brother had no way of knowing when Stu Farrell would take those sleeping tablets. But all you had to do was wait until he did and then plant the note. Yes, I think this is all the evidence we'll need for this case, Lieutenant. You see, crime, even when it starts with comics, always winds up in tragedy for the criminals. Thanks for being with us. You're always welcome. We'll hope to see you again soon.